everyone, it's Rita with Everything Homemade. And we are going to do um, tilling the garden today. So while all the starter plants are starting to grow, we're gonna go into the garden and you can hear my husband probably tilling. We're gonna go check that out. I've got hay all over me, so don't mind that. I've been um, pulling hay for the cows and, and the sheep and the goats to feed, but I'm gonna take a break for a moment and let's go check out what my husband is doing. So my husband here is able to get into this spot. There's a lot of weeds. This um, garden spot has a lot of dandelions and a lot of grass, believe it or not. Um, so it's a work in progress. We moved to this property about three years ago. So we have added stuff to this dirt and uh, you know, manure this year, some well decomposed manure. And so it's, there's a lot of fiber going into it. Um, we've got tricks and tips to how to um, help out with all these weeds. Cause as you can see, the dandelion roots get broken up. So it's kind of a pain in the butt in that way, but a work in progress, that's for sure. So he's gonna till the garden once here and then he's gonna till it in two weeks. This will help to kill all the maturing um, or germinating seeds. There he is right here, I better get out of the way. So after John tilled the garden, as you saw before, this is what it looks like, okay? It's just, I, I love seeing a tilled garden. But what I really want to look at is the soil, okay? So take a look. I'm looking at the fiber in the soil. We There is some straw from the goat bedding that we did put in here. It was two years old, um, well, well decomposed matter. And we're building up the soil. We want a living, healthy soil for our plants. And successful gardening starts too, right here at the soil level. Let's talk a little bit about manure because if we need a healthy soil, we need manure in the garden. On our farm, we have a lot of different kind of manure and manure is not created equal. What you do with one type of manure, you cannot do with the other type of manure. So I'm gonna talk about geese and ducks. Geese and duck manure, you can put directly on the garden without a single problem. In fact, it's one of my favorite manures around. Even with my peppers that are going in pots, I will take a tablespoon of their poo and literally put it into my watering can, stir it up, and pour it directly onto the plants. I have been doing this for years, and it is one of the best manures around. It grows plants so perfectly. So if you have ducks or geese, you can put that manure directly around the plants or just put it into your watering can and stir it around and there you, there you got it. So that's really, really simple to do. Now on the other hand, the chickens you see, their manure is hot. It will literally kill your plants within a matter of hours if you put chicken manure directly around your plants. It needs to decompose. And, and what we do is we put the chicken manure in with the cow manure so everything decomposes over several years because it, it is so good but it is hot so you cannot use it directly on your garden or any plants. Totally different than the duck and geese poo. Completely different. Now, chickens I lump with guinea fowl, as you kind of saw there. The guinea fowl I also um, lump in with a hot manure, and same with turkeys. So, turkeys, guinea fowl, chickens, you're looking at hot manure, needs to be decomposed. So come along with me, we're gonna head to the manure pile.
Okay, so we got a lot of things going here. You have to remember we're in northern Alberta, Canada. Summer is very short, winters are long and cold. So for things to decompose, everything's going to happen at a slower rate. And I'm a lazy composter. I don't got time to turn things over and over, plus the volume of our manure coming from our goats, our sheep, our cows, our chickens, guinea fowl, turkeys, geese and ducks is massive. For us to even utilize small composters or you know a, a darker garbage can is literally impossible because the amount of poo that literally comes off our property. So we have a big pile here we get a lot of coffee grounds right here in through the loop program we're right now cleaning out the chicken coop and that's going over there but what happens is the older spot that is just a year old is right here and take a look this is cow manure okay I'm gonna just kind of move these prickly branches but take a look at this some places we're starting to get dirt. So from the cows and the, and the hay, the mixture is decomposing into beautiful, and I just put a whole bunch of this on my raspberries. So what my husband will do is he will take the tractor this season. He hasn't done it. He hasn't done it yet, but he's gonna stir this. So he's gonna push a lot of this over. He's gonna mix it a bit and then he's going to go to the cow um, pen where they stayed all winter. And look in one season, take a look at how much poo the cows make in one winter. All right, so we are at our cows here. So let me introduce you to, this is cinnamon here. This one here is clover. This is Neptune, and then we got Nutmeg. So we only have two full-grown cows and two yearlings. So this is ground level, you guys, right here. Look how high we are, okay? Seriously, like this is all poo and straw. Look at this on this building here. Maybe this will give you a better idea. Well, we got it clean out. Take a look. This is, this is our, where it should be, way down here, and it is incredibly high. And this is, you guys, one winter. So we're May 11th right now, so my husband's got to come in here with the tractor, and he's going to clean everything, and all of this goes to that compost pile. And while he does that, he will start moving that compost pile. As you can see, we have a massive amount of manure. This is gold in the garden. Absolutely. And this year, we scraped in the, in the goat pen. We scraped about, oh, at least a foot deep of two-year-old already compacted um, goat poo and sheep poo that was so already decomposed and the reason why it was still there for two years is because when I got pregnant with Meadow I just I lost all energy it's been a really hard two years so I'm catching up on some things that didn't really have to get done in the go pen then but got done this year and we threw that all into the garden directly because it was already so old this here is too hot so if I take a fresh poo, this here, and it goes straight into the garden, it's gonna start to kill my plants. It needs to decompose into that nice dirt that I showed you before. And it happens quite quickly. I mean, we're only turning this pile once a year, but the pile heats up inside, and, and the microbes and the insects, they just do their thing. So, so if you don't have access to all of this, what I do, don't worry. There's a couple of different ways to get access to really good manure. One, depending on where you are, whether you're in Canada and the States, I'm more familiar with because I am Canadian, is go on Kijiji. 
Well, I used to live in the city for 10 years and I just went on Kijiji and found some farmers that will literally bring you truckloads of poo from their farm, from their huge comp uh, manure piles for like under a hundred bucks. And we did that every single year. You can go, I mean, if you're on in the United States, there's Craigslist. If you know a friend with a farmer friend or whatever, just start asking questions. <laughs> Farmers are happy to get rid of this stuff. They always have too much. So that's one. You could also go to Home Depot. You can go to a garden center. You can buy manure, but the difference is, is that it is sterile, okay? They cannot sell living manure in the garden centers. So what, what benefits is getting it from the farmer is you get the microbes, you get it, you get real. The other disadvantage about getting it from the farmer is you might inherit some weeds that you normally wouldn't have in your garden because again, the manure pile, it's living. So it might not have, you know, um, killed all the seeds that is there. So you kind of got it you know, a little more weeds with living, living with a living product or less weeds with a sterile product. It's up to you. I prefer to go the route of the living, real manure and I have done it for years. So think about that when you're planning, planning your garden right now, adding that, that good manure is very, very important. Farmers are very gracious. Sometimes you even get farmers just coming in and will give you a, a truckload for free. But you know what? Give them a little bit for it. Um, it's always appreciated. Um, other than that, think about what your needs are for the garden. This is what you want to be doing. It is May 11th. We are two weeks from planting in the garden. So garden prep is number one right now. Get your garden spot ready. Till it get it going um, adding the manure we're going to be tilling it in in the in the next two weeks that way it keeps down the weeds the first weeds that came up have been tilled the second batch is not far behind it's going to start sprouting so you want to get ahead of that um, you want to think about your design of the garden right now start watching the sun and what i mean by that is i know here my property is east facing right here and you can see the sun maybe glaring at you now the sun will come here now i'm just going to show you the sun is going to rise here in the morning and it's going to come around by noon it's going to be right here it's going to be at the highest point and my garden spot is right directly at the highest point then it's going to hit these trees and go down so what you want to do is watch where your sun is hitting because if you don't then then you might plant your cucumbers in a spot where it is shaded most of the day instead of a spot where it gets the morning sun the morning sun is the most critical sun you guys it wakes up the plants so you want your squash your cucumbers your corn any of those warm loving plants getting that morning sun your red beets your carrots if they don't get sun till like 10 o'clock in the morning that's fine but they need to have the afternoon sun so watch your sun levels right now for the next two weeks in your garden spot because it is critical on where you plant and I will be talking more in depth and once we start planting and why I'm putting my plants where I am and how I rotate the garden and all that jazz a little bit later but pay attention so what I like to say is watch the 7 o'clock Sun watch the 10 o'clock Sun watch the 12 o'clock Sun the 2 o'clock the 4 o'clock and the evening because those certain points is when the sun really starts moving in different directions and you want to know where the sun hits at certain points of the day and if you got an open garden no big deal but here we got some trees that will shade certain parts of the garden at certain hours of the day so i really want to make sure that my plants get a lot of sun and which plants can get less sun over some plants that need more sun so there's your project for the next two weeks. Think about the manure in the garden. Think about the sun. 
Now, let's head back inside to my seedlings as we need to do some maintenance on the cucumbers and melons, or sorry, cucumbers and pumpkins and zucchini that have come up. We need to do some general maintenance there. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do and talk about a bit of thinning. So let's head back now inside. Hey everyone, we are back on our catio and we need to do some serious cucumber, pumpkin, zucchini maintenance. Now, remember we planted them in these pots right here. We need to either take some plants out and do some maintenance, so let me explain here. First of all, let's look at the cucumbers. So these five here are cucumber plants. Now you may say, think that, hey, the taller the cucumber plants, those are the ones we should keep because they're bigger and more mature. That is not the case. Never think that way because what happens is what I'm looking at is right here, do you see how this cucumber plant comes up? It's what I call leggy. It basically germinate and go, where's the light, where's the light, where's the light, and grew, 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 finding the light before it opened up its, its false leaves at first. The shorter ones here, they found the light sooner, so they're going to have a stronger stalk on average. So two things I'm going to do. I'm going to thin it to um, three to four, depending on how I feel, but I'm definitely going to thin to three plants for sure. But I'm going to also add dirt because what I want is cucumber plants will actually root out anywhere on their stems. So you can really make them strong. So I'm going to do this plant this one first. I don't like this guy here because he's so leggy and I don't like that so I'm gonna pull him and this one here is really close to the edge and I'm just gonna pull that one leaving these three here. Then I'm going to press down the dirt so it's firmly packed in leaving me space for more dirt and what I'm gonna do is simply add more dirt into these containers so it strengthens their stem and also buys me the last two weeks before planting so I have strong plants because what happens is if you don't have strong plants then their, their stems crack and break and you do not want that to happen. Now this little guy is a little behind, has some funky leaves going on here, but I'm gonna keep him in there anyway. So basically something like that. Then I'm going to water and I'm gonna water a little bit on top of these guys just to wash them because it's nice and warm right now. The sun is out so I'm not too worried about any mold or anything growing. They'll dry off really quick. This one here buried its leaf a little bit but I'm not again too concerned about it because he's gonna pick right up right away. So I want to add a little water and press this down again and I'm gonna leave that one like that. So I'm gonna do another one because every container here is a little different. Okay, we got two really pretty cucumber plants here. We got two kind of leggy in the middle. And then we got this one right here. So what I'm actually going to do is I am going to pull the two leggy ones right out from the middle. Leaving the um, shorter ones behind. And then I'm going to add some dirt to my pot. I'm always looking for the strongest plant, not the tallest plant. Just remember that because lots of people think, well, the bigger, the taller the plant, the better the plant. And that is a really, really not the case. Okay, so let's water. Again, just bear with me while I show you guys this because I'm going to do every single container here. Um, again because they're all different so as I finish I'm just gonna put them off off to the side here right into the Sun 
Okay, so the next one, take a look. We got a really, really weird cucumber here. You see that, Grace? Right here? I don't like it, and I'm just going to pull it. So that one is off. Now, I've got three really nice looking ones here, and again, a leg ear one. And I'm going to pull that leg ear one out. Add some dirt. Let me go a little nicer. Now we're two weeks away from planting and yes my plants are small and that's exactly where I want them to be. I don't want them to be so huge that they break and become almost impossible to manage. They will pick up really quickly underneath the plastic that I'll put them in after when we get them into the garden. Now if you look at this one, these are beautiful. You know what, I'm gonna leave all four in here. They just, they just germinated really well. They're all nice and strong. I'm just gonna add some more dirt. But these four specimens are just beautiful. They're wonderfully placed, so I'm just gonna leave them in there as is. Okay. This one here has all five, so we got five out of five germinating. Five is a little much for this container, so I am going to remove the taller ones once again. And I'm gonna leave three, because three is a good number in here. And simply add more dirt again. I'm just gonna blow off the top there. There you guys go. This is just therapeutic to me. You know, playing in the dirt and my plants is like, it's just therapy. Wonderful therapy. So next thing we need to do is zucchini. Now you can see the difference in size. Look at that. Okay, comparison wise. So let's focus on this container here. We got a lot going on. We have five out of five that germinated. Cute zucchini is a bigger plant in itself. So this one's really squished to the side. I'm gonna take him out. Sorry, buddy. Um, this one here looks really good. You can see how strong that stem is. I really like that. So I'm gonna keep him. Um, this one here actually I am going to pull just because he is big and I want to kind of stall my plants a little into the garden which might sound funny but isn't um, because you don't want them to break by the time I get into the garden so I like the di I like the placement of this guy this guy here is opening up beautifully zucchini on the other hand is a much bigger plant and I'm actually gonna pull this one and this one here didn't have that great of roots so I'm happy I pulled them. I'm gonna leave it to two in this container just like that. Again I'm pushing things down and now I'm gonna add some more dirt. Again zucchini is the same thing. They will root out eventually wherever the dirt is touching on their stems so you can really really make them strong and adding this, doing this process is really important to strengthen your plants. Again, I'm just gonna blow off the top here and then water. And then adjust my knee. Oh, okay. And then water these guys in. And then sometimes I just readjust the dirt a bit. And then there we go. Okay, let's do another one. Oh man, I got good germination this year. So this guy's doing pretty good. This one here is kind of, well, he's trying to find the sun. I'm actually going to just pull him out. He's kind of like in the middle of things. And then this one here is really strong. So I'm going to just take the two middle out here. And that will alleviate the other ones some. And there we go. So the only thing when I was planting is I planted some butternut squash 
and for some reason my seed did not germinate well everything else germinated so I guess I'm thinking it's bad seed um, I don't know why but I guess we're not doing butternut squash this year we're gonna stick with pumpkins more and that happens too I mean even me there is some issues it's like what the world happened with that particular seed who knows okay so we got a really small one right here we've got look how strong look how big that stem is you see that it's really really nice all of these are really nice and short this one here I'm actually gonna pull look at the roots you see that good roots on these plants they'll be right ready to go and here I'm actually gonna keep these three for now actually I'm gonna change my mind this one's right at the edge I'm gonna pull them out I'm gonna keep these two right here Okay, the last zucchini one, I've only got three out of the five that germinated. I've got a little one right here that's coming nicely. I got one more in the middle, and then this one here is really leggy, and I do not like him. And so I'm going to just plop him out of there and keep those two. Okay, so that is done. The last ones that need maintenance are the pumpkin. Take a look at these pumpkin. Woohoo! They're beautiful, aren't they? And literally, oh my goodness, Grace, we have literally five out of five on each one that germinated. That is unbelievable. So let's take a look. There's a little one here. I'm going to pull this little guy out. Right here again, really, really nice root system. But I'm going to keep it to the four here. Um, and then it looks like, man, I just cannot believe. Like they, this, this seed is, oh, I ordered these seeds. This is like three-year-old seed that I ordered a while ago and never, ever had the opportunity to really plant the pumpkin. So the kids are really excited to plant pumpkins this year. I've had the seed for a while. Okay. This one here, you know what I don't, I'm not even sure that I'm going to pull any plants in this one. They are all situated really nicely. They're growing evenly and I'm just going to just top them off here on this particular one. And there's actually quite a bit, don't need much on this, this one. So I'm going to just go like that. And then this one here. Okay, we got a really tiny one here, but he's kind of off to the side, which is really no big deal. Again, um, I'm thinking I may pull this one. Maybe this one. Which one? Ah! Fine, that one. Okay. Add some more dirt. This one here will kind of grow off that way, so I'm just going to leave him. That'll be the last one here. Okay. So now I'm just going to make sure these guys are all back where they need to be in the sun. And take a look at the corn. The corn is doing awesome. I'm going to put it right back here. I'll clean up that mess after. I'm just going to put my corn. I had moved it out of the way for the demonstration. So the other thing I want to do is I want to recap a little bit about the manure because I got kind of sidetracked with talking about the sun. 
So let's recap here. Out of the bird veneer, duck and geese, you can use that poo straight on your plant. Right on your plants, whether you're making manure tea or just working in the soil. Chicken, guinea, turkey, you need to decompose. Now, there's many other animal birds out there. Those are the ones that I deal with here. So I'm dealing with the animals that I know on my farm, okay? When we're talking about mammals, we're talking cow, sheep, and goat, and even horses um, decompose first before you put it on the garden. Rabbit, on the other hand, you can use their manure straight on the garden. So that's really cool. If you have rabbits, they poo a lot. You can use that poo directly on the garden. Um, other than that, you guys, that's everything for today. We've covered a lot of, of important things. Enjoy your week, and I'll probably see you next week while we um, do some more plant maintenance and start even preparing the rows in the garden. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.